Hi guys, today's topic is called levers. So let's try to guess what's, what a lever is and how it works. A lever is a rigid bar that turns around a point called a fulcrum. It's a strange name, but it's very important for you to know this name, fulcrum. Don't forget it. And on a lever, various forces may act. Let's see one example. This is a lever. As you can see, we can distinguish the bar, the point of support called fulcrum, and two forces, one, and two, two different forces, a fulcrum and a bar. This is another example of a lever. This is the bar, the fulcrum, one force and another force. So in a lever, we can always distinguish three elements. The point of support called fulcrum, the force that we apply and the resistance that we want to overcome. The force we apply, the resistance we want to overcome and the fulcrum. And the bar. We have three different types of levers depending on which element is in between. Classed first lever. We have the resistance, the fulcrum, and the force. Which element is in between? The fulcrum. So when the fulcrum is between the force and the resistance, we have a lever of first class. Class second lever. The resistance is between the fulcrum and the force. We have the bar, the fulcrum, the resistance, and the force. And the element what is in the middle is the resistance. So this is a second class lever. In the third class lever, we have the fulcrum, the force, and the resistance. Which element is in between? The force. So when the force is between the fulcrum and the resistance, we have a lever of third class. These are examples of the three types of levers. First class levers, the fulcrum is in the middle, and we have the force and the resistance on both extremes. Fulcrum, one force, 
resistance. This is a CSO. A CSO is a very good example of a first class lever. Second class lever. We have the resistance in between. So we have the fulcrum and the force in both extremes. Look at the wheelbarrow. Wheelbarrow. Uh, we can consider this like a bar. This is the bar of the lever. This is the fulcrum. This is the resistance we want to overcome. And this is the force that we apply. So, as the resistance is in between, this is a second class lever. And third class lever. In this class, the force is the element that is in between. A fishing rod is a very good example of this. Fishing rod. So this is the bar. This is the fulcrum. This is the force that we apply. And on one extreme we have the resistance we want to overcome. And now let's study the law of the lever. This is the formula. In this formula appears the force, the force. The letter D is the distance from the force to the fulcrum, D. The resistance and the letter E, R, means the distance from the resistance to the fulcrum. So, the law of the lever states, if we multiply the force applied by the distance from the force to the fulcrum, that multiplication is exactly the same as if we multiply the resistance by the distance from the resistance to the fulcrum. It happens in every lever, independently from the type of lever. So if we have a second class lever, it happens the same. If we multiply the force by the distance from the force to the fulcrum, that multiplication is exactly the same as if we multiply the resistance by the distance from the resistance to the fulcrum. Third class lever, the same. If we multiply the force by the distance from the force to the fulcrum, that multiplication is exactly the same as if we multiply the resistance by the distance from the resistance and the fulcrum. Vamos a ver un ejemplo de aplicación muy sencillo. Aquí tenemos la fórmula de la palanca, la ley de la palanca que nos dice que la fuerza aplicada multiplicada por la distancia entre esa fuerza y el punto de apoyo o fulcro es exactamente igual a si multiplicamos la resistencia que queremos superar por la distancia entre esa resistencia y el punto de apoyo. Aquí tenemos un ejemplo. Tenemos esta palanca, la distancia entre la resistencia y el punto de apoyo es medio metro. La distancia entre el punto de apoyo y la fuerza es un metro. Queremos elevar una fuerza de 2000 newtons. Los newtons 
son las unidades en las que medimos la fuerza y la resistencia. ¿Qué fuerza tenemos que aplicar utilizando esta palanca? Vamos a aplicar la ley de la palanca. ¿Qué fuerza es la que tenemos que aplicar? No la sabemos. Multiplicamos por la distancia desde esa, de esa fuerza al punto de apoyo. Un metro. Pues esto es exactamente igual a la resistencia que queremos superar, que son 2000 newton, por la distancia de esa resistencia al punto de apoyo, que es medio metro. Multiplicamos 2000 newton por 0,5 metros, son 1000 newton por metro, partido por un metro son 1000 newton. Aplicando aquí 1000 newton, solo 1000 newton, vamos a poder elevar 2000 newton. Estaríamos en el caso de esta hormiguita y este elefante. ¿Podemos con una fuerza pequeñita levantar un elefante que pesa mucho? Pues justo para eso sirven las palancas. Un concepto nuevo que debéis pensar es el de ventaja mecánica. Todas las palancas no presentan la misma ventaja mecánica. ¿Cuándo decimos que una palanca tiene ventaja mecánica? Pues siempre que tengamos que aplicar una fuerza más pequeña que la fuerza que quiero levantar. ¿La fuerza que ejerce la hormiga es más pequeña que el elefante? Sí, esta palanca tiene ventaja mecánica. El ejercicio que hemos hecho antes utilizaba 1000 newton para levantar 2000 newton. Esa palanca también tenía ventaja mecánica. En clase reflexionaremos sobre esto y veremos qué palancas tienen ventaja mecánica y cuáles no. Hasta el próximo día.